we just plumb a specific function that does this. And so, as I said, it came for free. So like it react to the tags, you see, oh, it's for KMOD6. So let me see if we can, for these packages, build a .iso image that people can use at install time to enable that kernel module. And so it was working fine. Mandatory schema, because it seems really mandatory these days. So I took a one uh, that I did. Like, it's co really clearly coming from my mind mapping for the signing services several years ago. I like to reuse it because it's clear. So it started from a uh, Git source. So now it's a uh, git.central or GitLab. Um, we submit, you submit a build task, um, either like manually or through some kind of automation that you have already. Um, and we, as a reminder, we, yes, we are using three tags. Uh, it was this, uh, discussed a long time ago uh, for candidate testing and release. If you build a package in candidate tag, nothing happened. It's just, I mean, you see the builds, it's there in Koji, uh, nothing happened. You can trigger some automation just for, to do some testing at that point if you want, but it's just the internal. If you tag it to testing, then it triggers something that the, the signing service catch on the message bus and say, oh, I need to do something with it. Let me just create a consumer or consumable repository uh, that will be pushed out. Uh, the repository metadata are signed with your GPG key, but not the package. The package are still unsigned due to an in initial decision from the center's board just to say, well, everything that goes to testing is just not unsigned. But it goes to what we call the build log CDN. Don't blame me for the name. Uh, I'm the one behind. I, I, I found that ID initially, but I can explain why. We should rename it probably. Um, and so it goes there so that you can use public consumption, it is backed by CDN, so clearly you can use it for your own testing. But don't point your user to that direct, to that CDN because it's unsigned. It's really just for testing purposes only. The next step is clearly release, and then it goes really like the whole process of each uh, package being GPG signed, uh, the signature is uploaded back into Koji, uh, repository is created again, and then goes to the, the mirror network. By the way, if you have a question, don't, don't be afraid of asking now, because we have, we have a dedicated Q&A section at the end, but uh, I don't want to stand be, between you and the lunch, I, because I'm the last one in the, in the morning, the last session, so it's really hard. So, um, talking about the, yes, you have a question. Go for it. Uh, can we have signed testing as well? Um, I mean, technically, it's just something we can enable, but you should probably open a ticket at the board level because it was a decision from the center's board initially to not sign at that level. Uh, if the center's board says fine, it's just a matter of changing and say, yeah, we can enable it, and then it will be done. I think that you have just one board member on your left. <laughs> Feel free to chat with him during the talk. I will help you file a ticket. <laughs> So um, when I mentioned build logs and .center log, the name came from um, when we started to build CentOS 7, you know that for a long, long time, CentOS was still be, being built on some machine somewhere, but not exposed. So people were complaining that they were not able to follow the distribution builds. So for 7, we were still using our distributed builds on uh, infra, which is not Koji for CentOS 7, up to CentOS 7. But we wanted to at least expose the, um, the mock config file for each package, the build logs. So what is coming from the mock builds to a central place that people can just follow and eventually help if we had problem building a package for distribution, just to bootstrap uh, CentOS Linux 7. So the, came, the name build logs came to mind. Uh, it should probably be renamed to something like testing or whatever, I don't know, uh, opens for ID, but clearly we can rename it. So it's really small infra, but thanks to a sponsor called CDN77, it's backed by them. So clearly if you point your automation to build logs, uh, you will retrieve the package from the CDN. So it should be still okay. Don't abuse it because the, the, the next step should be really going to the mirror network. Um, Mirror.center.org exists for Maybe uh, maybe almost 20 years now. I don't know. I don't remember, but it's really a long time ago. Uh, it was just uh, running from sponsored machine, from sponsors uh, all around the world. But the bad news is it will go away. It will be decommissioned completely in 2024. Why? Because that one uh, exists uh, for CentOS Linux 7, which goes end of life next year, and for CentOS Stream 8, which also goes end of life next year. This is the first time in the CentOS infra story that we have two releases 
going to end of life at the same time, meaning that we have to reinstall everything before that to CentOS Stream 9. So mirror CentOS will go away, and the same legacy mirror list uh, services will go away because there is no no need to keep something running for something that is end of life and will be archived completely. But if mirror.centos.org is dead, long live to mirror.stream.centos.org. So you clearly see that um, there was a, a new path starting from CentOS Stream 9. Everything with stream in the name, uh, in the fully qualified domain name, means CentOS Stream 9 and beyond. So it's easy to remember. So mirror.stream.centos.org um, uh, started from CentOS Stream 9. Uh, it has a cloud front infra in front of it, but don't use it because um, Adrian is previous talk mentioned mirror manager. So clearly uh, you should be using mirror manager. But in worst case, there is one that um, um, that uh, cloud from uh, that mirror manager can point to, which is that one or another one, which is in the same setup. Uh, and we still are relying on sponsors infra for earthsync.stream.centerlog, which allows the third party mirror to pull all the content from us. So everybody likes graph, so just one for you. Uh, just some statistics I got from Zabbix uh, for that mirror network, so sponsor, so nothing about CloudFront, just like sponsors infra. And clearly you see from the peaks when there was a stream nine push, a massive compose going out. Uh, and total aggregated bandwidth was something like 17 gig at the time. Just talking about machine we control, not about the third party mirror, which of course we have no statistics from. So, but um, I remember when you started, uh, it was more or less like if we could hit one gigabit per second, it was really great. Now it's of course 2023, so it's better. So uh, once you built your packages and um, you want the package to go out, hopefully uh, you do some kind of testing before tagging to release. This is where um, CI comes to mind. So CI.centos.org, which is legacy, uh, and the, the initial platform uh, was the commission last last year. Uh, the, the idea of CI was, uh, the Centos, the, sorry, CI.centos.org was just a uh, central Jenkins where you could just do automation and interact with the infra. But it went away. Completely, it was replaced by something new. The idea is that uh, we provide OpenShift for you, here we go, sorry for the reminder. Uh, OpenShift and Duffy. So Duffy is a strange name for an API that I will explain after. Um, it's worth knowing that you can interact with one or the other or known or both. It's really up to you. All the services that I'm describing are really opt-in. So it's really like a, a Lego or a puzzle. You can just take, take building blocks from all these services uh, and do whatever you want. So uh, initially it was hosted on-premises uh, in the data center, uh, but it moved uh, to the cloud. And the last step is to um, decommission the on-premises OpenShift cluster we have that will go away end of March. So gentle reminder, like between codes, if you are a SIG and still using the old one, it will go away soon. I know that Hyperscale has to migrate the, uh, to the new OpenShift, which is running from AWS completely. So again, uh, thanks a lot to Amazon for sponsoring that infra because it's really there for you. So we can use or abuse it, depending on how we look at it. Um, so on the left, it's what's still left behind uh, from the Red Hat data center for CI, dedicated uh, environment. And everything moves on the right, more or less. So uh, we clearly de deploy uh, AC2 instances, uh, ARM64 and x 64 in EC2. Um, for you, so you can just request machine on demand, you will get it, uh, you will run your test, you just uh, talk to the API back, say, hey, I'm done with my test, uh, and this is just the machine that just recycled like this and waiting for you and contextualized for you automatically through a specific API endpoint. Uh, that can or not be done through the OpenShift uh, solution that we deployed uh, in December in AWS, and that is using AFS as a storage solution for your persistent volume in OpenShift. Uh, and we have some kind of VPN, VPN tunnel between these VPCs and until the Red Hat data center there dedicated for CI. Why? We needed to keep something on premises. One architecture, PPC 64 LE. We have some SIGs relying on PPC 64 LE, uh, clearly, because they build, they want to test it. And uh, it's not possible to, to test in AWS because they don't support that architecture. 
It's as simple as that. So just to ensure that uh, the CX could still test against native PP64 early and not doing some kind of crazy emulation with QMU or something like that, um, we have a very, very small uh, uh, Open Nebula cloud-based solution running on top of power, uh, which is there. And uh, at the back, uh, our solution is just using Ansible to provision either in the cloud, like in Amazon, or like on-premise cloud in Open Nebula. So we still provide both. So OpenShift, um, it's a big name and some people are afraid of it. Uh, you can, you can sometimes, you can be afraid by OpenShift, uh, but you can request your SIG. So if you really want to automate things and you just want to uh, have something ready for you, we have a um, uh, manage OpenShift, we manage the platform as a service for you. So we manage the OpenShift, uh, but what happens, like what happens in Vegas stay in Vegas? What happens in your namespace remains in your namespace, but we are, we are not responsible for it. So um, what we can provide you is a kind of managed template for a Jenkins instance that is automatically tied to SSO. Uh, and it will automatically have all the secrets mounted for interacting with the API for Duffy, which I will explain in the next slide. But it's, it's not mandatory. Uh, you can deploy something else. Uh, as I said, it's tied to SSO, so fast. Uh, or ICO, which are the same, uh, and the groups are automatically synced. So if you, uh, on, as a SIG shares, if you onboard someone in your SIG, it will automatically be granted access to that namespace. And if removed from the group, it will be removed from that namespace automatically after. Uh, it's used persistent volume based on uh, AFS, so NFS under the hood from uh, Amazon. And uh, what it will, li will look like is basically that kind of URL uh, this is the full URL for the, the, your application. Uh, and if you go to the SIG guide, you have the full URL to the console, the OpenShift console. Uh, you can interact with it from your laptop as well because you can just have with the OC binary uh, a, a token after you logged in with uh, SSO. And so you can interact with your, from your laptop to do some deployment. The other service we provide is Duffy. Um, so Duffy is just an API endpoint just to transparently um, let you request machine. So you can query interactively. Um, it will return a JSON format, uh, a list of um, available pools. So CentOS Stream 9, CentOS Stream 8, CentOS Linux 7, ARM64. Um, we even started to support Fedora Rawhide because systemd, the upstream systemd project is testing on that infra and they wanted to have also Rawhide. So uh, it's provisioned uh, AC2 and, as I said, Open Nebula Cloud Images. One small remark, when I mentioned in C2, um, it's classically C2, meaning that uh, normally it doesn't support nested virtualization. So if you want to ask a, a machine and then deploy yourself another machine inside, virtual machine doesn't work. For that reason, we also support, uh, but very, very, very limited uh, amount of node, a bare metal instance, because Amazon can do bare metal instance. Um, and we have that, but like you have really reduced capacity for that. So justify why you really need that. But if you do, like systemd, they really want to bootstrap a virtual machine on that machine, from there you can grab the output to debug in case something goes wrong. Because if you just do that on a plane EC2, there is no way you can easily grab the console output. So this is something we can, we can offer, but usually just use classical EC2 instance. Um, what it does is that um, Duffy went open source completely. Uh, was uh, Akash uh, participated in the in that that project? Um, so clearly you can have a look. But um, the idea is just to be really a thin layer, and at the back it's all Ansible based. So it's just calling Ansible. And Ansible is really um, the, the, the engine that provision everything for you and contextualize the machine for you. And um, last but not least, documentation hosting. Um, who is having a look from time to time to wiki.centers.org? You shouldn't, Alexandra. <laughs> so like, like, like all wiki, um, the problem with the wiki is that you, you, it needs to be maintained and of course interact with it, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's the reason why a lot of people moved away from this. Uh, this is a discussion for the, the documentation sake. So clearly we, we need to bootstrap the discussion uh, because clearly wiki.centers.org is running on CentOS 7, going end of life next year. And, and no, we don't want to have a look at um, migrating from Moin, which is Python 2 based to Moin, which is still Python 2 based. So we need to move to something else. 
But for you, if you want, um, it started first as the CentOS uh, InfraSig. Uh, we decided to go to something that, <clears throat> that was based on Markdown, and which is MKDoc based. We use a variant called Material for MKDocs, which is really easy to use. And uh, because we had automation for this, we started to provide that as a service for the SIGs. And some SIGs like Kmart and Hyperscale, Automotive SIG, they are, they are using that as well. Um, you can just point to whatever Git repository it is, where it is, GitLab, GitHub, whatever. We can just take it and automatically rebuild the documentation for you and it will be landing uh, on, that, uh, on that website. And I think that's it for now. I have a section for Q&A, and then we can have lunch. I, I promise. I promise to just keep it short, which I did. You actually, you have time now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I wanted to run because myself, I'm starting to be angry. Yeah, multiple question. Front row first. So. Um, all the people who have CI jump host access um, after Duffy, uh, the on-premises decommissioned, uh, would we would they still have access, or they need to request access? So, um, if uh, for the for the project who had access initially, they were automatically uh, granted access to the new one, mm -hmm. and so the group were automatically created. All right. So it was automatically, so um, someone else did a comparison, had a look, and was trying to reach out to some people to confirm they were still allowed, what, they wanted to, to still use it. And if so, yes, they were automatically created as a fast group, and it was automatically deployed at the other side. Oh, thank you. So you should verify. If that's not the case, uh, normally all the CI users are also uh, automatically um, subscribed to a specific mailing list, and so should get all the, not the notification that we are sending about Reminder, this is going away soon, so please have a look. Uh, regarding Image Builder, uh, have you looked into the flexibility that it gives you? For, because as far as I know, it kind of blocks you from what you're trying to achieve there. Uh, because it like is very opinionated in terms of uh, what kernel to use and which disk layout and stuff like that. So can you can you repeat the question? But maybe, maybe with oh, the, sorry, yeah. sorry, maybe. Oh, oh now I yeah, oh, sorry for that. Uh, so you mentioned image builder, and as far as I know, it's kind of opinionated in a way that I'm not sure it will give you the uh, um, the flexibility that you need in order to build your uh, the images that you're looking for. Have you looked into it? For like, what for GitLab Runner? Excuse me. You said GitLab Runner. No, I said image builder. Oh, image builder. Okay, so. Um, um, if you, there is an open ticket uh, in the in the infra ticket for this, um, at the moment, Image Builder has one issue. Like for example, um, Hyperscale, they would like to do it, but clearly they would like better for support, which doesn't exist at all in Image Builder. So this is this can be blocking already for them. The other is that the way Image Builder was designed through a Koji plugin is interesting, to say the least. <laughs> so I can give it detail, but it's it's all on their page, but. Um, nothing is built on the Koji. The Koji builder will just talk to the image builder, but the image builder will just stop there. It will not talk back and upload back the artifact to the builder so that the builder can upload to the hub. So the image builder itself needs credential access directly straight to Koji hub. So it's not going like this. It's like, well, it's not going like this. It's going like this and image builder push back. I think it's a design problem myself, but I'm not designing image builder. Um, and it needs absolutely Kerberos authentication for that because it was clearly designed with something specific in mind. So they are open to work on missing feature like TLS authentication, which is what we are using for CBS. But at the moment, it's not there. So I would consider those two things a blocking factor to, to, to switch to image builder. But this is clearly something we can have a look at. I mean, we start investigating it. See, because for me, it was the API itself, not the way that they're running, but we're trying to build an auto SD image through that and just doesn't give us the flexibility oh, that we need. You're, you're right. For automotive, clearly, um, you clearly need to, to use OS builds directly because, yes, image builder is really opinionated, meaning that plenty of things are hard coded in the Go code about how you want to do things, which is the reason why some people prefer the old way of building an image, why so kick stuff, then you clearly just do whatever you want inside. Um, I think this is something on the roadmap they would like to do, like enhance image builder to be to be doing something that we were doing 15 years ago. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Just for FYI, there's a there's a 
OpenShift operator to deploy uh, image builder on an OpenShift that we that my team uh, wrote. So if at some point you're looking into uh, deploying it somewhere, uh, yeah. then ping us. Let's keep in touch. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Any other question? No. Great. That means that we can have a lunch. Thank you.